Your home and Andal vassals may be upset at you for appointing a stone Dornish Kingsguard. He's fucking Sir Arthur Dane. He will serve loyally, you assholes. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Crusader Kings 2. This is the Robert's Rebellion series, and we're playing as King Robert of the Iron Throne. We have overthrown the Mad King. Uh, I think I think we always had this one in the bag here. Uh, what is this down here? War of Reachman Independence. Oh, right, right. Well, with the combination of generally every major, uh, every mega war, you generally have to choose the fate of the people that you've defeated. And I think we chose to pardon most of the people, pardon most of the minor lords and the king's guard, but then we chose to take the lands from the Tyrell since they actually sided with the, um, they sided with the Mad King. I'm surprised we're not at war with... House Duran. House Duran. It's it's House Martell. <laughs> Prince Duran is a part of House Martell. And I'm surprised we're not at war with him. Maybe maybe time has to go by maybe time has to go by soon. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But right now we are going to cast down House Tyrell and we will put someone faithful in charge of the Reach. I'm not sure if anybody left any comments about what exactly we should who we should give the Reach to. I'll have to check here, I'll have to check. But it seems right now we've got Tywin, good old Tywin Lannister, and we've got Cersei betrothed to Renly. I think it was Joey Cognition who suggested that maybe we should marry Cersei instead. Ooh. Well, uh, okay, Lyanna Stark is gone, she's gone, and she's gonna divorce us, and it's gonna make Robert depressed, or at least a 25% chance. Um. No one really said if there's any kind of way to uh, prevent this from happening. I do think that um, it is, how do you say, it is um, random. Like, you don't know, uh, there's a chance she could die in childbirth, and there's also a chance that she could escape um, to Essos. And I think people kind of said there's no point in really chasing her, because, you know, she just, she, she's kind, this is kind of her way of letting Ro Robert know she's not really, <laughs> she's not really interested in him, which is... You know, understandable, although a little bit extreme. Um, let's make her a character special interest, though, as well as Sir Arthur, the Sword of the Morning. Because it seems they've escaped together. Let's see. Um, oh, Sir Arthur, his fellows in the King's Guard. Okay, she's, she's gone across the Narrow Sea. He's... Okay, he's here in Pentos, and I'm assuming Lyanna Stark is here as well. She's in Pentos. Right, so she escaped with the Sword of the Morning. I'm not sure if they're going to get together or something. They could, I don't know. Um, Lyanna isn't pregnant, though. Somebody also suggested we look for Jon Snow, and she's not pregnant. She hasn't had any kids yet. I don't think Jon Snow exists. I mean, we can do a quick look, but I doubt he's gonna be... Mm, nope. How about Snow? Snow Hill? No. How about Dire Wolf? Or how about just Dire? Um... Hmm... Is, is that what it is? Stark? No, that's Stark Bloodline. Right, that would, that'd be better to look for. Let's look for Stark. Okay. And we can just do it by age, because I highly doubt Jon Snow is going to be... Going to be... Right, we got Paramount Rob, who's a Tully. E Iona. Hmm, he's a sister. Iona. Interesting, right. Rob, Rob, and uh, all the other children have been kind of reset. Oh, yeah, because Edward, Edward was killed by Sir Arthur Dane. So it seems that uh, Edward Stark didn't have Howland Reed around to uh, stab the sword in the morning in the back of the, the back of the throat there. And uh, right, there's a lot of Starks, but I don't see any Jon Snow. I don't think Jon Snow exists, but we will definitely keep these two as characters of interest because I would like to see what happens with them. I don't think we're actually going to try to do anything. I think right now Robert is going to be more concerned with destroying... Uh, the Reach, pretty much. Oh, it seems we're going straight towards there anyways. And Rob is now, uh... He's now available. He's now available. Who's Jenna? Jenna Turnberry, right. So, I think... Somebody suggested maybe we should break the betrothal with Cersei. I think that's gonna make them... <clears throat> Apologies. <clears throat> it's gonna... It's going to... Hmm. Can I not break the... I guess I can't break the betrothal now. Because I gave... Renly some land. Shit. <laughs> well, it looks like Renly is going to marry Cersei because I cannot force her not to. That is kind of shit. Okay, well, uh, <laughs> that's unfortunate. We cannot marry, uh, we cannot marry Cersei Lannister after all. 
which it kind of sucks. The Stannis have a wife? He does. We picked a wife for him. Now we have to pick a wife for, uh... We have to pick a wife for Robert. But before we do that, I want to look... Is it, let's see, the Reach have got 10,000 men down here. We've got another 7,000 men up here. I think taking out this force here would be a great way to get the advantage over the Reach. It seems that in this particular war, we have the West on our side. We have the Riverlands. We have uh, the North. Do we have the Veil? Vale? Yes, we do have the Veil. Vale. Excellent. Oh, they haven't had a kid yet. Paramo uh, Lysa and John have not had a child yet. Um, let's see. Maybe we can solidify future alliances in some capacity with Robert. Okay, so we got the Paramount Rob, who's age zero, who rules uh, Lady Iona. I mean, we could we could marry Lady Iona, but she is zero. She is. It'll be a 16 years before Rob is able to have kids. I think having children right now would be a lot, a lot more prudent. Um, could we marry somebody, Princess Ariane of Dorne? Right. I think I know who she is. We. I mean. We could betroth her to Robert, but... And that would make her a, a queen one day. And that would make House Martell very loyal to us. Um, I'm not sure. Let's let's see how this war pans out first. Aw, oh, damn. We need some money. Yeah, we need some money. Your bannerman, Lord, Ma Lord Master Tristan, is currently under threat from external enemies. Who is he being attacked by? Defending against... Yeah, it is my duty as a... Uh, a new Lord Commander of the King's Guard was needed, and he is tr traditionally the most senior and able of the Seven White Cloaks. Who shall fulfill this venerable duty for the King? Um, you are a Martel. You have a dual skill of 80, but you're old. I think I might make it a point. Oh, you can't. You can't kick people out of the King's Guard. Unfortunately. So even when they're old, they still have to... They still uh, can serve. Let's see. Lord Commander Willem. Your skill is 80, and he's 26. Uh, didn't we... um? Didn't we put Lord Commander Willem on the King King's Guard? Sir Barrist in the Bold. Yeah, let's make Sir Barrist. Oh, I, I can. Ooh. There's also Jamie Lannister. 125. He, that is a ridiculous dual skill. Jamie Lannister's sword. A gilded longsword originally wielded by Jamie Lannister. Very cool. And there's also Sir Jonathan Derry. Right. So, of them all. I only have five here. Of them all, it seems it's going to be between Sir Barris in the Bold and Jamie Lannister. I think Jamie Lannister is the most um, qualified. He's got the best dueling skill, so we'll pick him. In the throne room, Lord Commander Jamie Lannister kneels before you to take up his new duty of leading the King's Guard, vowing anew to protect your person from all those who may harm you. I'm certain he will be loyal and true. Excellent. Lord Commander Jamie of the King's Guard. Brilliant. Um, bring me the greatest knights of all the realm. Bring me knights from powerful houses. Okay. We've got Sir Miles Mouton, who's got a dual skill of 80. That seems to be the average for King's Guards. Um, Sir Balon Swan, 95. And then once he's no longer a teen, he's going to be at 100. I like Sir Balon Swan. It would be the highest honor to serve in the King's Guard. Excellent. Maybe one day he will become the Red Swan. That'd be awesome. But we have a war to win. Uh, Sir Balon's father looked on with pride as 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 the newest knight at Ever King's Guard's Wars vows. Great. And we'll destroy this force right here real quick. Um, speaking of... I oh, fighting across the field, you see an enemy soldier cut off from the others. As you get closer, you realize the enemy soldier is King Mace Terrell. Ah, King Mace Terrell on the battlefield. This will be a glorious victory. Prepare to die. Whoa! What the fuck is that? the dual wounded. I'm not sure what that means. I'm not sure why I'm seeing that. That's for, I haven't changed anything with my installation. I'm not sure why that's popping up. I know that's normally the defensive stance, but luckily that's not what I was actually going to pick. I was going to pick... Oh, we're still wounded? Hmm. Still wounded. Let's go for... Probably going to go for strength because we are strong. We, we need to choose an ambition too. Uh, this flesh wound will not stop me. He's no match for my might. I would be so fucking pissed if King Mace... The Oaf is able to kill King Robert of the Iron Throne. I would be beyond pissed. I mean, I'm glad I'd be playing a Stannis, but I'd be really, really pissed off. You know, personal combat skill of 105, no combat skill, and he's somehow able to best Robert of all fucking people. So this should be this should be a for sure win. But sometimes, sometimes CK2 likes to play dirty, dirty games. So. Let's try with strength. You see a weak spot, a vulnerability in King Mace's defense. It's not much, but it's all you need. Strike. King Mace tries to fight back, but you force your way through, easily overpowering his defensive 
is pathetic defense. You strike for his heart with all your might. So, I mean, I imagine when you're wielding a sword, you'd be almost like thrusting it into their heart. But Robert wills a giant warhammer. So I imagine he's bringing this giant warhammer down right onto his chest plate. Made of his ornate uh, emeralds and stuff, as I'm sure the Tyrells often do. Ours is the Fury. It's going to piss off a lot of the Tyrells, but we're going to cast them down anyways. King Mace crumples to the ground lifeless. You wipe his blood from your weapon. The deed is done. He is dead. And we get 150 prestige because we just killed a king. Too bad we don't get the, um... We don't get the King... like King Robert the King Slayer or something. That'd be, that'd be fucking awesome. What kind of ambition do we want? Do we want to win the war? Not really. Um, Let's get married. We'll get married to somebody. We got, we got to find a house. A major house somewhere that we can marry into. Apparently we're at war with attacking in War of Reachman Independence. Mmm. Right. So the Greyjoys are aiding the enemy. That's not good. Um, I'd love to marry some kids or somebody from House Aaron. Just to secure the alliance with the the Vale. But I don't think they have any kids. See that they're they're no they're no longer vi uh uh Aaron's. What the fuck? Was burnt at the stake at the order of Ares Targaryen, Albert Aaron. I didn't know that. There's only three living members left of House Aaron. There is uh let's see. We can actually just look it up here. Cause just like we have Starks, there's also Aaron. Aaron, um, but we need to look for the, the the female, the female line, and look under, ooh, Rowena. Oh, it's picking up the Aaron bloodline. Shit. Um, there's Para, Aaron of Gulltown. Oh, Aaron of Gulltown. It's like a cadet house for House Aaron. Very, very interesting. Um, speaking of good cadet houses, eventually when we when we upgrade a 1.8 after we've gotten uh, most of the series that we've got going on right now completed, we will be able to switch over to 1.8, and then we can start playing around with cadet houses. I desperately hope that there are cadet houses uh, working with 1.8, but I was looking at some of the cadet houses just for funsies in 1.7 here, and they've got some super cool cadet houses. We're talking like, um, uh, if you could be a cadet house of House Lannister, you can be the Silver Mains, the House Roaring, House Re was it was it Red Claw? That was cool. But even more so would be like a cadet house of House Stark. You've got Goldfang, which is like the golden wolf of House Stark, and embroidered with the gold around the the, the border. And and or or cadet house for for the Greyjoys are uh, House Silver Ink, which it's not the same squid sigil. It's a different very vari variant of it, but it looks super badass. So we might be giving something like that a shot in the future. But one thing I want to actually look up right here. This is going to be, this might be kind of cheesy. She, she'll marry him. <laughs> she'll marry him. What the hell? She will marry him. Her opinion of Robert, her base reluctance. So her opinion of Robert overrules her base reluctance. I mean, it would be good. I mean, she's part of, she's, she's part of how Stark... And it would solidify the North. Not that the North is the greatest of allies, but they can be. They can be. I mean, I have to do it, right? I have to marry... I mean, she's willing to do it. I know it's kind of cheesy, and it's not very its not very lore-friendly, but... I mean... Before... I mean, technically, Lyanna should be dead, so that's not very lore-friendly. Fuck it, let's do it. Let's get married to Lyanna Stark, and that will solidify our alliance with the North. And if she, if she goes to Pentos and then decides to come back and marry Robert, it's like, well, she chose to. You know, we didn't force her. We didn't cheat. It's part of the game, bro. It feels good to be recognized. Oh, yeah. We just killed a king. Of course we should be. All right. Uh, bring me knights from powerful houses. Apparently, there's only Sir Miles Mutin. Um, none of these men should guard me. So we get to do one of my favorite things, and we're actually going to look for... Um, we're going to try to find the best fighters in the realm... Uh, okay, that's not going to work. Diplomatic range, yes. Um, women, they can be any. And let's go to... We can't make White Walkers or <laughs> Kingsguard. <laughs> we can't do that. Um, so people, the way th the way it works is they want people... Now, see, you're already my Kingsguard. I can't pick you. And it's also former slave. We want formidable. Let me see if I can spell formidable without looking at my keyboard. I should be able to. There we are. Right. So we shouldn't be looking at former slaves anymore. We should be looking at these people. Now, we can... Lord of the Marshes. He'd have to come to my realm, though. Join court, yes. Arthur. We can we can invite we can invite the Sword of the Morning back. 
God damn it. <laughs> God damn it. All right. Fuck it. May okay, maybe, maybe uh, Sir Arthur Dane and Lyanna Stark are like, ooh, Robert's not doing that bad of, as, a, as a king. Maybe he is worthy to, worthy to serve. I don't fucking know. I don't know. All right, and we have gotten married to Lyanna Stark. We have done the impossible, and she is now Queen Lyanna. Um, now what do I want to do? Fall in love. That'd be great. More diplomacy is always good. Let's follow this army here to Adadale. Adadale. King Robert and Queen Lyanna have gotten married. There's no one to pay the dowry, but you know what, Lyanna? Lyanna's present is a, is a, presence is a reward enough. Representatives of Aegon Targaryen have requested an audience with you upon meeting with them before the court. You hear that they're offering to pay for the... Ooh. Um, oh, God, we desperately need the money. I forgot about our prisoners. Well, I mean, we only have two, right? We only have two. Um, Aegon. Let's see. Uh, Elliot died... Right. Rhaegar beheaded on the order of King Robert... Elia died of poor health. Um, Elia has a sibling, Rhaenys Targaryen, who she's got a claim on the Seven Kingdoms. He has a claim on the Seven Kingdoms. We cannot, we cannot let them escape. You have a new heir. Oh God! It, you have a new heir. If your character dies now, you'll play as Lord Renly of the Stormlands. What happened to Stannis? Died in battle against the forces of Quentin. Where? Where did he die? Oh shit. Your Grace, news from the Battle of Highgarden. We have reports that your heir, Lord Stannis Baratheon, has been killed while leading troops in battle. In Highgarden? You were leading troops in Highgarden here. No, Stannis was in this f army right here. So this must be a, a fucking error or something. Yes, this is... I think this is an error. He, he was leading one of my flanks here, and he was killed. Who killed him? I'm sure it told me... I uh, Forces of Quentin... Quentin. Who the fuck is Quentin? There is no Quentin here. You're separated from your men in the chaos of battle and now find yourself in the midst of war. As you scan the field and try to rejoin your forces, you see Sir Vortimore break through the enemy ranks and charge you. Really? Well, I mean... Okay. Let's, uh... Let's send one of our, uh... Hmm... Balon here. One of our newest members of the King's God. Or maybe we should send in... Send Theoden Wells. Because Balon, honestly, is more valuable than, uh... Theoden is. Let's have Theoden handle this. All right, well. There we go. The, the mere sight of him. All right, Sir Arthur, Sword of the Morning, has returned. We're actually going to take this off of Queen Elia, the Queen Liana, because it's no longer necessary. And then you, sir, I would like to appoint to the King's Guard again. Your Grace, it would be the highest honor to serve in your King's Guard. Excellent! You're... Let's see. Your home and Andal vassals may be upset at you for appointing a stone Dornish Kingsguard. He's fucking Sir Arthur Dane. He's 120 combat skill, and he's only 25. He will serve loyally, you assholes. God, they're so picky about, uh... Looked on with pride as he became the newest knight. Oh, great, thanks. All right, well, I need a new commander over here. New commander, we've got Jenna George. God damn, George. George is a fucking genius. No children, though. George, you need to start making babies. Now, where is the damned Terrell host? Where is the damned Terrell host? And because the squids are also aiding the aiding the, the, the rebel reachmen, we need to keep an eye on King's Landing. They may attempt to make in a, a landing here, and King's Landing has only 3,000 men. We cannot afford to let them capture Lyanna Stark. We actually take uh, Arthur, Sir Arthur Dane off of this... Brilliant. Since I don't see any Terrell armies, we're just going to march straight for Highgarden. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go straight for Highgarden, and everything will work itself out. Um, okay. Any bad factions? Viserys. Ooh, yes. I forgot. There are some surviving Targaryens. Speaking of, we have to do something with these children. These children are dragon spawn, and they actually have claims on the Seven Kingdoms. We... Um, we have to do something. Ah, oh, God, we can't. Hmm. Let's see. We lose ten piety. We can throw them in the ouble. They'd likely die down there. We can't execute them because we become tyrannical. We can't plot to kill them. I think throwing them in the ouble would be the best way to uh, ensure that they die. It'll take away. It doesn't say we'll get anything negative like tyranny or cruelty or anything. We're just gonna throw them in the ouble and hopefully. Um, that will take care of him. We do lose some piety, which is unfortunate, but um, we can make up some of that later. Great. 
So now the dragon spawn are um, your heir Renly as member of your royal family should be protected by a member of the king's guard. Who shall we send to King's Landing to fulfill this to fulfill this duty? Um, let's see. We've got Sir Baylor. We've got Sir Balon Swan. We've got Sir Barristan the Bold. We've got Sir Arthur, the Sword of the Morning. The King's Guard protect the king. <laughs> yeah, f yeah, fuck you, Renly. Um, no, I think we will send somebody to protect Renly. He is only seven. I don't suspect he'll be in danger. Um, who are we going to send? These are a lot of good candidates right here. I would send Arthur the Sword of the Morning, but I kind of want to keep Sir Arthur at my side. Grant him a landed title. He, yeah, I was going to say, why can he... He shouldn't be able to get that because he's um, Kingsguard. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. I think I'll keep Sir Arthur Dane for myself. Uh, we've got Sir Barristan the Bold, who's also really fucking good. He is slightly worse than... Let's send Sir Balon Swan to protect Renly. That'll be good. It's only one man, but uh, that should be enough. I have a title I can give away. A title that I'm not interested in keeping. I've got a lot of titles uh, that I'm not interested in keeping. Castle of Rainwood. That's down there. Um, who do I want to reward? I'd like to reward my commanders who are doing a fantastic job. Like, Jenna. I cannot award her land, unfortunately. I just want to look at my... Uh, my uh, Lord Harbert of the North Stormlands. Your kinsman. Interesting. Paramount Knight. Jamie. You will be the Paramount Knight, because he's a very knight knightly guy. Uh, let's get you out of here. Oh, yeah. Sir John Connington. Supporter of the crown. The old crown, that is. How many soldiers do the Tyrells have now? 14,000? It's a decent amount. They'll have to march them all together, though, because they seem to be kind of separated at the moment. Scattered. I would like to reward my generals. That's normally what I do. And those who have been most helpful. George, I don't, I don't know you, George. I don't know you. Um... Jenna, she has no ambition or focus, but I think it would be wise for her to have children. I could, you know, I could, that could be a bit presumptive, but I think she would like that, and that would be a good reward. If I make her marry, though, we will lose her as a general. Shit. Yes, we would. We would lose her as a general. That wouldn't be good. Sir Richard Horp, Sir Theoden Wells, Commander George, Lord John of. Mmm. I'm going to pop out of the game for a second. I'm going to look at the comments that you guys left me so I'm not missing anything. I think somebody may have suggested to give some lands to certain people. Oh, shit. I can see 10,000 men right there. Where are they going? They're going to Horn Hill? All right. Where the Tarleys are. Yeah, we're going to have to keep an eye on that. But right, but I will be right back. Okay. Uh, no, one, no one left any ideas for particular titles and stuff. So I guess we'll just have to kind of make it up as we go. I'm not going to give any more titles to my brother because... Well, I mean, who's going who's gonna to rule the Stormlands? Let's see, I rule the Seven Kingdoms, and the Stormlands, and the High Lordship of King's Landing, and Dragonstone, and Shipbreaker's Bay. Um, okay, the the Lordship of Shipbreaker's Bay, I also own Storm's End. We need to get rid of Castle of Rainwood, and we need to get rid of um, uh, uh, Dragonstone. Let's, let's give Renly Dragonstone. Let's do that. We'll give him... The Lordship of Dragonstone. Why is it highlighting King's Landing? That's King's Landing. Oh, no, 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 no. That's it right there. I was getting confused. There is a little blue glow. Yes, you will have Dragonstone, buddy. You will take Dragonstone. Um, You have the High Lordship of Dragonstone. I will give that to you as well. So Renly will be absolutely uh, loyal to us. He should. Excellent. Um, Now then. I guess we're also going to be the... I mean, we're going to be the king, and we're going to control the Stormlands. I kind of like that idea. Because, I kind of like that idea because Robert should be the ruler of the Stormlands, and because sometimes when you go to war, you might end up relying too much on your allies, and I'd like to have a good support base here in the Stormlands, which I often don't get to do. We should probably recolonize Summerhill eventually. Summerhall, Summerhall. I think you get a dragon egg if you do that. What is that? What is that sigil? Is that a dragon flying over a... Uh... Hmm. I really need to do a bit of a... Bit of a... Oh my god. Oh shit. Okay, um... We gotta leave. We gotta leave. We gotta leave. There are... Ironborn ships. The Iron Fleet has been spotted off of Massey's Hook. And they've got a lot of ships. They're most likely coming into uh, King's Landing. Okay, they're close to King's Landing. We need to... We need to... Ooh. 
Why is our war score dropping? Tire controls all their holdings. Okay, so we, we gotta take something. We gotta take some territory. Sir Mark of Lion's Den. It's Lion's Rest. Alright. Interesting. My allies, my allies will continue the offensive against the Tyrells for me. We're gonna march back and we're gonna end this army of Lord Reaver Siegfried. Yeah, they're, they're dropping a lot of soldiers. And they're gonna start... Oh, okay, well. I thought they were gonna drop 4,000 men. Because they've got 45 ships here, but it uh, looks like they're not gonna do that. Um, I've been in this... Uh, no, fuck you. I don't want you. Ooh, the crossing... The, the twins are now with us. Great. Um, let's get to Adadale. Yes. Siege of Night Song. What? Uh-oh. Well, that's not good. It is as if I see Liana for the first time. Her good-natured spirit, the interesting and funny quirks she has, and how lovely she really is. Could it be that I love my Liana? Embrace the love I feel for Liana. Excellent. Do it. And now our diplomacy goes up. Sweet. Let's have some babies. It is as Robert always desired. Maybe we should have Robert sit this... No, you know what? Because, I mean, he's wounded. He's wounded. You know what? He's wounded, but we're not going to let him... We're going we're gonna to make him keep fighting because Robert is one of those rare characters where the more he fights... Well, the less he fights, the worse he gets. So we need to keep him fighting always. He's, he's a true warrior. He must be fighting. He must be fighting. There we go. And it seems the Ironborn are actually putting up a pretty damn good resistance, even though we have them uh, pretty decently outnumbered. The, the squids are holding their own. Fighting across the field, you see an enemy soldier cut off from the others. As you get closer, you realize the enemy soldiers load Victarian Greyjoy. Victarian! Should we kill Victarian personally ourselves? Oh, he's a formidable fighter. He's not. He's no fucking joke. And he's strong, too. But he's kind of stupid. This character isn't the sharp knife, sharpest knife in the drawer. He is quite stupid. But he is brave, formidable fighter, and strong. We are strong, skilled, brave... In fit condition, Robert's Warhammer, it would be a really, really close duel. Actually, he has his beat. He has his beat, and I desperately don't want to play as Renly. So what I might do is I might send in one of our one of our bests, the, one of the best we have, and that is Sir Barristan the Bold. Go forth, Sir Barristan the Bold. Protect your king. You look on in horror as Sir Barristan falls. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> to Lord Victorian, crumpling to the ground, his cloak stained with blood. Lord Victorian slowly advances on you. It's over, your grace, he says. This ends here. Wow. Did he at least get wounded? No, didn't even get wounded. Barristan the Bold stood no fucking chance against this guy. Holy shit, this guy's unstoppable. How did he become so good? Oh, a lot of it is... is, is, is how did he become a formidable fighter? That's, that's ridiculous. I want to be a formidable fighter. Oh, oh no. Now the duel of the fates here. This this could end the whole series right here. For the first time, Robert Baratheon faces off against an opponent who is, by all accounts, pretty even with him, pretty even, and Robert is wounded. Isn't it, it, it's so fucking ironic that just before this battle, I was thinking maybe we should pull Robert out of, out of the army because of that bloody wound. It still hasn't healed. And now we're in a fucking duel with all, like, Victorian of all fucking people. Ah, oh, ominous, ominous. Unfortunately, we're going to have to end the episode here. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But we, I am all out of time. And this seems like a perfect place to leave the episode off. Will Robert succeed in putting down the, uh, the, I don't even know. What, what, what do you even call Victorian? The, the stupid, the stupid Kraken? The stupid giant Kraken? I don't know. Will Robert survive? We don't know. We'll have to see in the next episode. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. As always, this has been Crusader Kings 2, Robert's Rebellion. I have been the Golden Joe Bolivian, and until next time, I will see you all later.